Hello everyone, welcome back to Tully Talks, and today we're going to be talking X-Force issue number 26. And on the cover we see the character Rainfire, with some former Mutant Liberation Front members that was led by Strife. Um, the last issue I covered was issue 24. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have X-Force number 25, which was part of the Fatal Attraction storyline. In that issue, Cable and X-Force had went against Magneto and his forces. Uh, Cable was nearly destroyed, though, uh, being crushed by Magneto. So not only was Wolverine seriously injured, during uh, that storyline, which had long-lasting effects. We're going to see some of the lingering effects of that injury in this issue, amongst some of the out aftermath of Fatal Attractions, and some of the inter uh, interpersonal stories that the team members have with each other. But before we get into it, I hope that I have earned your subscription. If so, Please hit that red subscribe button down below and hit all on the notification with that bell symbol. Like, comment, share. Tell me who or what is your favorite X team. Uh, do you have a favorite member of this team, X Force? Is there things that you wish they would have done with this title back then? Um, let me know. But uh, let's get into it. X-Force number 26. We begin our issue that's written by Fabian Nietzsche and Matt Bourne. Uh, you got anchors. You got a few different anchors here. I'll zoom in for the credits of the issue. But we basically have the team surrounded by cable in the med lab that is at their headquarters. They all are very uh, worried. You got Warpath, Siren, Shadowstar, Feral, Boom Boom, or Boomer at this point, Ripter. You got Cannonball. You got Robert DaCosta, Sunspot. They're all worried about whether he's going to make it through or not. They start uh, basically. Uh, conversing how he's more man than uh, he's more machine than man and um, Farrell is making jokes about uh, like at one point she made a joke about I wonder if we can add a toaster to him you know and that upsets Warpath because she's not taking this very seriously which I feel like people do tend to use humor in tense situations. Uh, you got Siren here who wonders again about all the scars on his body. Were these individual scars, were these all happened at the same time? But um, it really just goes to touch that no matter how tough you are, we all have scars that we are looking to hide. Uh, we also see uh, them talking about how he's going to make it through because of how tough he is and where he's come from and who some of his uh, enemies have been. And this is the joke that Farrell made about adding a toast to his arm. Again, Warpath gets all uppity, but Cable finally gets up and kind of takes it as the joke that it was meant to be. Uh, and he asks her what type of Pop-Tart she wants. Which was funny. We got this ad for a game, I guess, at the time. Dungeon Strike. Anyone play Dungeon Strike? <laughs> we pick up three days later from when Cable, uh, yeah, from when Cable finally, uh, woke up from his injuries. Uh, he's talking to Cannonball and um, he's asking basically 
uh, cannonball to go with Robert somewhere to um, basically go into Madripoor for some information. And the reason why he's sending them to is because of their old connections with the New Mutants team. And whoever they're going to come across, it's better to come across Cannonball and Robert as opposed to two strangers like Farrell and maybe uh, Warpath who hasn't had too much history with people. As uh, they talk about, um, you know, what's laying ahead, you got Boomer here talking to Cannonball because... They currently are in a relationship together, but Boomer is not really feeling uh, like a priority to him as of late, and it's kind of um, not really dealt with at the moment because he responds by saying, well, Bobby's waiting, I gotta get going. You have Richter here, who's kind of adding some fuel to the fire, because uh, he wants to basically sit here. And I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a page. Basically, Richter's asking her, you know, does, do you love Cannonball? And do you really think that Cannonball loves you? And that's something she's really not going to answer at the time. But she storms off to think about it. Then you see Richter here walking around the headquarters, kind of seeing what everyone is up to. You see Farrell here kind of doing her own thing. You see Shatterstar here working on his uh, basically cardio and fighting skills. As you can tell, he probably puts a lot of effort into that. Uh, they basically get into uh, the feelings of uh, the overall vibe of the team at the moment. And then you got Siren here, who is the daughter of the X-Men Banshee. Uh, as far as I know, at the moment, Banshee is dead uh, from the Deadly Genesis storyline. I don't know if they ever resurrected him. But she's got the same power as he does as Sonic Scream. But she's totally wasted in this issue. And she tries to hit on Shatterstar. Because she's looking to uh, uh, basically get laid. He rejects her because he's really not in the mind frame of that at the moment. Then you see... Sh Siren kind of being em emo in a way and going on her own over there giving out a sonic scream because she's not feeling too happy about her life at the moment. Here comes Cable with some weird coloring to his hair in this panel but then back to white in this panel. Uh, she kisses him. He kind of is definitely feeling awkward about that. Uh, she even mentions the age difference, like, oh, not bad for an old man. Uh, Warpath kind of walks in on that, and he's like, uh, what's going on? Siren falls down. Cable explains to her. Oh, well, explains to Warpath she's drunk. She winds up kind of passing out. He asks Warpath why uh, not prevent her from doing this, being you do have feelings for her. And he explains how he's worried of... He does confront her about her alcoholism. She'll push him away, and then he won't be able to help her on any level. Not even being able to carry her uh, to her room and lay her down for the night. Cable uh, reminisce in his head about how Warpath is the last of his people, and how him and Siren seem to be going on a downward spiral because of their loneliness. And it's almost as if that's the reason why Cable said he got this group of mutants. It, because they were broken. They were lonely. No one was looking out for them exactly the way he thought they should be. He mentioned how Magneto tried training them. How Charles Xavier started training them. And they were still broken. And that's why he stepped in to try to give them direction. But he's unsure if that's exactly what's happening. He's not sure if he's getting through to these people. Then he sees Shatterstar walking into the inside of the headquarters where you see Richter watching TV. Which, by the way, uh, I wonder what show he's watching. That looks like a man bat and uh, some sort of penguin character. 
Ha <laughs> uh, But you see Shadowstar come in, take the controller, and just start flipping through all the channels, which irritates Richter, and he gets up. He's like, you don't even ask to change it, and then you just don't stay on one thing. You keep clicking, 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 clicking. Which, on a little backstory of Shadowstar, he was raised on the Mojo uh, homeworld where entertainment rules. And you don't really stay on one thing, you keep just finding new entertainment, new content. Which almost feels like the real, real world is Mojoverse. Uh, it aggravates Richter. He goes, takes off, Cable tries to talk to him. He then tries to blame Cable for the death of his father, meaning Rick's, Richter's father. He didn't kill him. Richter acknowledges that, that he didn't kill him, but there's a lot of other reasons why he finds him to be an asshole. So that's really not going uh, well with him either. He just doesn't seem to be really connecting with anybody or making an impact the way he thought he was going to. He then continues to wonder if what he's doing is the right thing. And before he leaves, he set the TV to change every three seconds without the remote control. And you see Shadowstar kind of impressed because Cable says, that's how you want the TV to be, right? He says, yes. And so now he just has the TV continuously rotating through channels. And it's usually the little things you do for people that turn out to be the biggest things that stick out to them. But then we uh, begin opening up on a prison where there's attacks uh, on prison guards. There's alarms set off. Uh, we're not exactly sure who's attacking. Uh, but we know for who uh, the prison break is for. It's for these MLF members that weren't transferred yet to a, a more secure location. We see the prison wall basically being broken open. We see the person leading the prison break speaking to this person, Forearm. And how he's super, like, super strong. And then you see Tempo here, whose armor allows her to travel through time somehow. Then you got this character called Reaper, who has a uh, psych, um, that, neuro, you know, disrupts your neural, uh, neural uh, pathways. And then you got, uh, what, you got Wild Child here. And the person talking to them is saying that you've believed in the wrong person. But now you have the sweltering tempest waiting to erupt known as Rainfire. And basically telling them that together they will be able to conquer and vanquish all their enemies. And then in the next issue we're going to see how that goes because that's the end of this issue. We're going to, again, exclamations. You got all these, well, not all these, it's only like three or four uh, letters. But that's it, X-Force 26. Uh, you have this Rainfire character looking a lot like S Sunspot. Did something happen uh, with Sunspot? Did he turn bad? Uh, because he did take off a cannonball, and we don't know what happened from that point to now. Or is it a completely different person with similar powers? We'll only find out in next force number 27, and uh, the upcoming issues after that. But thank you so much for stopping by. It means so much to me that you're taking time out of your day uh, for me and for this community of Tully Talks. Please, again, if I've earned your subscription, subscribe, like, comment, share, hit the bell notification, and until next time, peace, schnookums.